Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to our webinar today on B Corp. So just to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and we will share the recording afterwards. So this is our fourth Green Transition webinar in our series of lunchtime webinars. And the webinars are covering a range of activities from what does a climate action journey look like to green finance to sustainability reporting. So over the last year, we have seen an increasing number of companies from all sectors and sizes under pressure from customers, from employees and from other stakeholders to communicate their climate and sustainability strategies and plans. And we all know now that this isn't optional or nice to have anymore, but that companies that are able to report and to communicate transparently will have a competitiveness advantage. Or to put it another way, companies that you know, can't, are then at risk of not being able to submit tenders, they're at risk of losing existing customers and at risk of not, you know, gaining new business opportunities. It can be difficult for companies to navigate the various standards and frameworks, certifications, verifications, pledges and disclosure platforms and reporting requirements. And this webinar series aims to demystify some of that landscape and to share insights from practitioners. So our second webinar was an introduction to the SME Climate Hub, which provides access to free tools to measure emissions and take action and to commit to net zero. Next week, our webinar is fo focused on sustainability reporting. And the following week, our webinar will be focused on changing regulations, in particular, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, and on the increased business focus that we're seeing now on climate and sustainability. And we will have uh, examples from the UK market. But today we are going to learn more about B Corp. What is B Corp? So B Corps are companies that are verified to meet high standards of social and environmental uh, performance, accountability and transparency. We have James McManus, Director of B Corp Ireland and also MD of Irish B Corp Earth's Edge, which is an award-winning travel company that became Ireland's fifth B Corp in, in 2021. James is going to give an overview of what B Corp is, how to certify your business and why it makes business sense to certify your company. It is James's mission, uh, I think it's fair to say, to grow the B Corp movement here in Ireland. James is then going to facilitate a panel discussion with Louise O'Connor, CSR strategist, Strong Roots, and with Mary Gray, marketing director, Urban Bolt. You will have time at the end then for questions and answers. So you'll see a Q&A function. Um, so please put in any questions that you might have and we'll, we'll come to those at the end. As this week is Ireland's Sustainable Development Goals Week, and there's events happening across the country highlighting the importance of sustainable development and promoting the sustainable development goals. It is great to have James, Louise and Mary here to share their insights on, on, on B Corp. So I'm going to stop sharing my slides now and James, I'll, I'll welcome you to join us. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks so much, Kathleen, for the introduction. I'm um, really excited to chat to you all about uh, B Corp, um, something I'm very, very passionate about. But I just wanted to start off by telling you about my own experience in business. Um, as Kathleen mentioned, I've been running an award-winning small business called Earth's Edge for the last 16 years. Um, and I've faced a lot of challenges as a business leader over the years. And I understand the types of pressure many of you are under on a daily basis. So I came back, the, I came through the recession back in 2008 and during the pandemic, our turnover was down over 90%. And I've faced all the day-to-day -day stuff too, like rising costs, cash flow issues, supply chain problems, employee retention, litigation, the list goes on and on. And as you guys know, business being in business is hard. You're constantly fighting fires and scanning the horizon for opportunities and risks. So I'm delighted to share with you that becoming a B Corp can solve many of your issues and create new opportunities for your business. Um, when we certified as Ireland's fifth B Corp in 2021, um, it was an amazing achievement for my team and I. And we were delighted to be able to benchmark ourselves against the best companies in the world. I'm a very impact driven person. Um, and I soon realized that in order to make meaningful change in Ireland and beyond, 
certifying my own business was not enough. We needed to grow the community of B Corps. So that has led me on to take a role with B Lab to grow the movement in Ireland. Um, so I'm going to try and attempt to share my screen with you guys. See if that works. Hang on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so just to have a little overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to explain the B Corp movement. Um, explain how you become a B Corp, the business benefits of certifying as a B Corp, state funding available to support your journey, and then the panel discussion with um Mary and Louise. Um, and then we'll obviously take your questions at the end. But before we start, I just want to play this um, short video, which does a great job explaining what the movement is. Throughout history, humankind has created a multitude of different economic and social systems. Traditional systems, absolutism, feudalism, communism, capitalism, the list goes on. And while systems are complex, the truth is they were built by people so they can be changed by people. After all, humanity is interdependent with one another and with the planet. The problem is this is often forgotten and short-term gains are prioritized over long-term value. Me over we, now over the future, inequity over justice, profits over people and planet. Leading to this and this. All of which are negative impacts of our current economic system. But it doesn't have to be this way. We can transform from profiting only the few to benefiting all, from concentrating wealth and power to ensuring equity, from extraction to regeneration, and from individualism to interdependence. It is not an unreachable ideal. It is the reality that we, the B Corp movement, are already building. All around the world, we enable companies to improve their social and environmental impact with our standards and tools. We certify and engage businesses that meet these standards. We catalyze public policies that expand businesses' accountability beyond just to shareholders. We steward communities and collective action and amplify the stories of people using business as a force for good. The B Corp movement, led by B Lab and Sistema Bay, positively impacts nearly 300,000 workers at over 4,000 companies in over 150 industries and 77 countries. Together, we're transforming the global economy to benefit all people, communities, and the planet. Together, we'll realize our vision of an inclusive, equitable, and regenerative world. Join the movement. Oh, right. Throughout history. Okay, perfect. Um, so just to give this a little context, um, <clears throat> our current economic system driven by business is creating significant negative impacts for people on planet. So the richest 26 people own as much wealth as 3.8 billion people. In an Irish context, we have over a thousand premature deaths yearly due to air pollution. 11% of our population live on an income below the poverty line. Throughout the world, over 80% of the world's original forests are gone. And then back to Ireland again, we produce over 250,000 tonnes of food waste every year, while at the same time, some 2 billion people globally suffer from hunger and malnutrition. So our vision is to build an inclusive, equitable and regenerative economic system for all people on the planet. Okay, um, sorry, one second. 
Yeah. So um, our global strategy or theory of change is to drive the adaptation of B-Lab standards to manage the impact of business, certify and engage business to improve their impact, broadcast business as an equitable force for good, catalyze policy change to enable business as a force for good, and develop a network of local and regional and global communities for change. So um, globally, there's now over 7,000 B Corps, some of them being amongst the most successful businesses and brands in the world. These companies are managing to remain profitable while looking after the interests of their stakeholders, living proof that this model of business works. Collectively, B Corps are employing over 600,000 people in 92 countries across 161 industries with one unifying goal to build an inclusive, equitable, and regenerative economic system for all people on the planet. In a European context, the growth of the movement has accelerated rapidly over the last few years. Currently, there are over 3,000 B Corps across Europe. The awareness of the movement amongst consumers, the prospective hires, and all of the stakeholders is growing all the time. From an Irish context, we now have 21 B Corps. There's another 34 Irish companies currently being assessed by B-Lab for certification. And another 500 Irish companies use B-Lab's tools to measure and improve their impact in the last 12 months, making Ireland one of the fastest growing communities in the world. So what makes B Corps unique? The B Impact Assessment Tool doesn't focus on one product or service, but rather the business as a whole. B Corps are legally required to consider the impact of their decisions on all stakeholders. B Corp is a global movement of businesses supporting each other to improve and drive global change. And certified B Corps must update their impact assessment and verify their updated score every three years. So who is eligible for B Corp certification? So you need to be a for-profit company. You can be of any size or location and you need to have at least one year of operations. So to become a B Corp, you need to do two things. The first thing is pass the assessment. B Corps must achieve a verified score of at least 80 points on the B Impact Assessment. And the BIA assesses the impact of an entire company. And the second thing is to make the legal change. B Corps amend their constitution, committing to consider the impact of their decisions, not just on shareholders, but all stakeholders. Um, so getting started with the B Impact Assessment. This is a free and confidential online tool to measure and manage your company's impact across five areas, governance, workers, environment, customers, and community. Customer or companies answer multiple choice style questions in five impact areas. If you score more than 80 points and decide to apply for certification, all your answers are evaluated and verified by B-Lab prior to you becoming a B Corp. Um, So here are some examples of questions companies are asked on the B Impact Assessment. This one from the workers section asks, what percentage of your employees are paid at least a living wage? Depending on your answer, you get more or less points. And just a note to say you don't have to pay a living wage to become a B Corp. We recognize it's not always possible in some industries. This question from the community section explores how diverse your team is. Again, you don't need to have female managers to become a B Corp, but you can gain points for having a more diverse leadership team. And this question from the environmental section looks at renewable energy usage and awards more points if you source your power from renewable sources. Companies pay annual certification fees based on turnover. And there are fee bans in place to ensure B Corp certification is affordable for all companies. So why put time and effort into B Corp certification? Uh, certification will help prepare you for CSRD and greenwashing legislation that will directly affect your business or businesses you supply products or services to. According to IBEC, 
average employee turnover rates have increased from 9% in 2021 to 12% in 2022. To put that in financial terms, the total cost of hiring a new employee is now estimated to be €40,000 when you consider hiring costs, training costs, and the knowledge loss when people leave a business. If a business has 1,000 employees and loses 10% of them annually, that's 100 people and a cost of €4 million. If you half that to 5%, it's saving you €2 million. Being regulatory compliant or, or having a basic sustainability policy will not attract and retain talent in today's world. You need to be ahead of your competitors and B Corp certification will help you attract and retain talent. As business leaders, you're very time poor. There are so many challenges in business like employee retention, energy costs, supply chain shortages. If you're looking for something simple that will tick all the boxes when it comes to sustainability, B Corp is that. B Corp is the most recognizable sustainability standard for consumers globally. It is still very young in Ireland, but it is very well known in the US and in the UK in particular. There is a misconception that B Corps are not profitable and that considering your stakeholders hurts your bottom line. This is not the case. In 2022, a study across Europe found that B Corps have a 22% average annual revenue growth rate. And more and more large companies are looking at sustainability when making mergers and acquisitions. Unilever now own eight B Corps and Irish B Corps, Strong Roots and Urban Vault recently received investments of 50 and 26 million euro respectively. Having B Corp certification gives investors a lot of confidence in their environmental, in the environmental and social credentials of companies they're investing in. So I know um, Kathleen is going to talk about funding at the end of the, the talk, but just to give you a brief overview, um, there's two funds that are suitable to support um, B Corp certification. Um, the Green Start is a consultancy grant to help companies implement environmental best practices, meet cost and resource reduction goals, and build a solid foundation for future environmental projects. Um, the grant rate of up to 80% of eligible costs, up to a maximum grant of €5,000. Really, to understand the eligibility criteria, it's important that if you're an EI client, you contact your development advisor, an IDA client, you contact your project executive. And if you're a LEO client, there is more strict eligibility criteria. To find out more, you need to go to the LEO website. Um, but this fund is more than enough to hire a consultant to help you deliver B Corp certification. And then the second fund suitable for larger companies is the Green Plus. This, this support for training initiatives is focused on enhancing a company's environmental management capabilities, driving environmental efficiencies, and improving overall sustainability. Um, the grant rate up to 50% of eligible costs, up to a maximum grant of 50,000 euro. And sorry, the Green Plus is really suitable for larger companies who need to hire a consultancy to support a more comprehensive change project to achieve B Corp certification. Okay, so thank you so much for listening to that. Um, before we move on to the panel discussion, I just wanted to share the link to the B Impact Assessment. Um, as I mentioned, it's a free and open source tool. There's over 200,000 companies around the world using it to measure their impact. So if you want to explore that. Um, and then if you have any questions for us in B Lab, you can email us on ireland at bcorporation.eu. Um, yep, yeah, so... Thank you so much for listening to that. And we can hold on. Yeah. So we're going to do the panel discussion, if that's okay. So um, I have some questions for Louise and Mary. So Louise, we'll start off with you. Can you talk to us, um, tell us about Strong Roots, what you guys do, and your role in the organization? Yes. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, my name is Louise O'Connor, and I've worked at Strong Roots since January 2020. Um, but Strong Roots has been around since 2015. So it's founded by our CEO, Sam Denigan, with one product, which many of you 
probably have seen in all good stores by now, the sweet potato fries. People went wild for them, quickly followed by multiple other products. And now I think we're on to something like 50. If you count all our different markets, we're selling 50 types of product. Um, it might be the same product in three markets. But my first big job when I joined Strong Roots as a CSR strategist was to get us the B Corp certification. So um, spent six months really getting to know the business and how we were doing things. And then um, six months of going through the certification process. So um, almost exactly a year after I started in January 2021, we certified as one of the first uh, B Corps in Ireland. Um, and it, yeah, it was a really, really amazing way to learn the business because I had this kind of pre-formatted really intensive um, and comprehensive structure to to help me ask people all I needed to know and how many give us an idea like of how many people are in the organization and where you're all based oh so now I think we're close to 60 six zero people um in Dublin I think we're about 40 and then we have offices in New York and London I think they have roughly 10 people each so um, we've we've grown a lot since we first certified and I'll be interested to see what in what ways that has changed when we go to recertify um, in January 2024. Mm, okay so you're nearly three years in so you're coming up to your recertification deadline. Yes exactly. Brilliant. Okay. So uh, Mary we'll bring you in for an introduction to Urban Vault and just explain what you do as well. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Um, Urban Vault, they're a clean energy company who specialize in two services. So we have light as a service and solar as a service. So essentially we remove the barriers for companies and make it easy for them to install solar or like that to replace their lighting systems with LED efficient lighting. Um, my role as marketing director means overseeing all of the, the marketing activity. So from social media, emails to radio uh, I don't know if anyone has seen our tv ad uh, and developing and implementing strategies then and managing the budgets for the company so busy role in a busy company which is great cool and so you guys were the first uh, Irish B Corp yeah and I'm gonna die by that sword I think uh, <laughs> I was saying it to Kathleen earlier but yeah we were Ireland's first certified B Corp uh, in 2018 which is amazing that's uh, incredible, yeah. And so do you know why they went for B Corp certification in the first instance? Yes, yeah, so our founder, Kevin, uh, he saw an interview by Yvonne Schunar of Patagonia and that inspired him then to pursue certification. So Urban Vault was created to have an impact on the environment. Um, then the B Corp certification really solidified that mission into the DNA of our company. So that's why we decided to, to pursue it. Uh, Louise, what about you guys? Were, were you the driving force in, in B Corp certification and Strong Roots? Um, actually, before I even started with Strong Roots, our founder, Sam, it had been on his radar. One of the reasons was because he had a, um, a kind of uh, personal relationship with someone in Ben and Jerry's. So he was well aware um, that they had long been a B Corp and he knew as well that they had been acquired by a larger company, but had maintained those kind of ethics and values when they were absorbed into a larger entity. Um, so he put it on my radar, actually, a few months before I even started, it was kind of made clear like this was going to be a big job for you to do. But um, really, like, if you're really lucky to kind of be part of the vanguard and helping to spread the message um, about B Corp. And I think Strong Roots has always been plant-based and we believe that frozen plays a role in reducing food waste and kind of being efficient about your food. So luckily for me, it was a, it was already a really good proposition to become a B Corp and the decisions that have been made were very smart up until that point. So a lot of it was kind of just codifying them and writing them down and making sure that we could show them what we were doing um, was good, but um, we were already on the right track by the time I came on board. Mm, yeah really interesting i think the mission lock thing is so um such a key part of 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 b corp because it's when your company's bought out or takes in new investors your the people and the environmental issues are are protected in the business and like how like from you know your csr role like how is certification really help the business um well in many ways probably, probably too many to mention here but i think um like the most kind of profound way and 
you might actually get to this as well. I know Mary will have something to say on this, but when we did um, receive that investment um, from McCain Foods, a big selling point was the idea that they wanted to learn from a business that was doing things better than they are. So the B Corp certification was proof of that and kind of reinforced the credentials that we had around um, plant-based and ethical supply chains and um, healthy products like healthier than competitors and so on. So it was a major um, aspect of why they were interested in getting involved with us um, as a minority investor. And then, I mean, generally staff morale, um, collaborations, obviously we're, uh, we sell in shops. So there's a lot of B Corps that provide a service or, or an agency like yourselves, but we, we sell a product in shops. So it's really nice to be able to collaborate with other retail based brands like Bailey's and um, Feed and Cully and Sully and try to plan events that kind of have great impact. And the fact that it's a global survey means that we've collaborated in the UK. We had a window in Whole Foods Kensington for the full month of March, which is B Corp month, um, which definitely wouldn't have been possible without sharing this certification um, with these other brands. And um, it really has kind of led to a lot of open doors, I'll say, when it comes to collaboration and sharing best practice and um, planning events and everything. Cool. And what about you, Mary? What would you say the biggest um, benefits of certification? Like, how has it helped your business? How has it helped Urban Vols? Yeah, like I think funding is probably one of the key things for us as well. And um, we just had an investment from Verdain. Uh, so they're a European growth specialist and they invested 26 million into the company and they've actually achieved B Corp certification in June. So when we were choosing a long term investor and when they were choosing us, we wanted someone to go the distance. So knowing we had the shared values of the B Corp certification was was amazing and also it reduces the due diligence required in the process. Um, because obviously they know we're, we're far, far along that road as is. Um, and then attracting talent. Like I think over the last year, we've seen a lot of staff that we currently employ. They came in because they, they sought us out because of the certification and they already knew that we were, we were B Corp certified and what that would mean to them as employees and stakeholders of the company. So that's been, been really amazing to see the kind of the knowledge base grow. Um, and then I would also say like gaining trust at the start. So when we started out in the company to have a global accreditation behind us was pretty great. We're building on the credibility. Mm. Yeah. Like how have you found, you know, as a marketing professional trying to land the B Corp message with, with consumers, it can be quite difficult at times, yeah? It can. I think it's maybe stepping away from the lines that we're all so used to, to seeing and, and just explaining it in simple terms. You know, it's it's an assessment that you can do. It's it's um framework for your company to just always consistently try to be better. Um, and I always just encourage companies, if they're curious, to just do the assessment, you know, because it gives you like that a really good framework and, and you can see areas on where you can be better uh, mm. immediately. But We've actually started doing a survey with our clients. Um, so a year in, they get a survey. And 40% of our clients have said that us being a B Corp actually kind of prompted them to partner with us, which is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that figure continues to grow. So that's really, really great. And come here, talk to me about your experience with the, the BIA, the B Impact Assessment. Like it's known for its rigor. Like how did you find, you you did it yeah, for Urban Vault, yeah? You... I did the recertification, yeah. so I can't, I can't take credit for the first one. Um, but as a marketing we... professional, like Louise is an expert in CSR, but like, how did you find it? How was your experience navigating the tool? And like, is there anything that you took from the tool, brought it back into marketing, let's say, for example? Yeah, I mean, I think the community side of things was really important for us. So we we um, developed a CSR committee internally in the company uh, based on our recertification because where we needed to improve was in the community. So giving back. Um, so we brought that into the company. But I think if you're doing it by yourself, it seems overwhelming when you look at it. Um, but if you delegate out the different areas between your team and do it as a collaborative piece of work, it's not that scary. So with the workers section, you know, loop in HR, with our environmental section, we brought in operations, and um, with community, we developed the CSR committee and brought them in. And then when you're coming to the stage of, of hopefully certifying, it's a real group effort and everyone feels the reward of it. So that's that's the advice I would give is definitely 
bring people from different areas of your company into it so it doesn't seem so overwhelming at the start yeah i know from um i get to have conversations with companies interested in certification all the time um but even within large businesses like the sustainability role is there's nobody full-time in sustainability so that's the case with urban vault as well you you're just passing it between different houses in the company yeah yeah, exactly. And there's there's different people with different knowledge bases, you know, so our customer section would be our customer success department. They would be the best people to to bring that in and to implement changes on being better afterwards where you see you can improve. So it really is a team effort and it, it's the whole company is trying to be better, not just one sustainability person. So I think it, it's just important to involve other other people. What about you, Louise? What's your experience of the BIA? Are you a fan? I'm definitely a fan. I think um, in the three years since certifying or two and a half, let's say, it's been a real motivator. I think it helps people understand in a tangible way why we need to improve. And for some people, they respond very well to the kind of almost gamified idea of, OK, this decision will earn us five points. Or if we do all these things, we might be one of the best um, certified food businesses in Ireland. So I think some people respond to that um, immediately quicker than they might to um, me just trying to explain an environmental science behind a decision, but also obviously you can follow up with all the education as well. But one thing that's been amazing actually and happening hand in hand with the recertification is um, the senior management of Strong Roots decided to adopt three pillars in our strategic planning and they borrowed them from a previous B Corp motto, which was people, planet and profit and set targets under those three pillars. So planet is actually one third of our goals now as a business and um, every department and every individual is required to set a target that relates to these B Corp um, standards. So that's been really amazing because every department and member of staff has been approaching me to engage more with the B Impact Assessment this time around. And I've even just been kind of, um, you can download obviously the questionnaire and just pick through it that way if, if it's easier. And I've been sending departments kind of the chunks of the questionnaire that will be relevant to them and that can help them set their goals. They don't have to align it perfectly with um recertification requirements but it helps them to understand the types of goals they could be setting so an example would be finance they might think oh you know we don't really have anything to do with social or environmental but then you can think about okay do we donate any pro bono hours do we um work with any banks that are community finance related do we have a green pension option and suddenly um, a department that maybe wouldn't have had that much engagement um, the first time around realizes, OK, there's actually a lot we can do, either as staff members in general of Strong Roots with their time and their expertise, or else as a finance department, there actually are ethical decisions they could be making and anti-corruption measures. And it really does open up um, a world of possibilities of being better. And they have to now, which is brilliant, because some people took a bit more convincing than others. But I love this. Um, this target based around planet and impact because it really does help people understand. Mm, yeah, that's really interesting. I think, um, you know, the, uh, one of the things about the B impact assessment is it's so extensive, isn't it? And it's impossible for business leaders to, or big companies to understand every single aspect of sustainability. And to that point you're making there, you know, you can gain points in the BIA if your senior leadership team have um, KPIs around um, people and planet. So these little cues or the questions can kind of trigger things that fit different businesses because ultimately the software where, where you're measuring, even you take the, the food industry, you guys, um, strong roots are being assessed in the same way as same software as like Danone, which is a $44 billion um, dollar company. So it's incredible the scope of the, of the assessment. And Louise, another question for you, um, do you like are you using any other reporting tools or do you pull like is your sustainability strategy based off the BIA or are you using other tools or reporting standards as well? Um, well, luckily, the BIA is very well aligned with the sustainable development goals, but obviously we would um, make sure that any of our goals are also aligned with them. They never conflict with each other. So that's very handy. The fact that they have the lab, the awarding body has already made that link. 
um, as a supplier to the UK, and we do have a major market in the UK, we're now required to sign up to the Science-Based Targets Initiative as well, SBTI, so show all the efforts we're making towards net zero. But again, um, the questions that the B Impact Assessment asks you already sets you on that path to improvement. So um, you earn points for understanding the impacts of your supply chain. You earn points for working with businesses um, that are already reducing their impacts as well. Strong Roots' model is that we don't own our own factories, so we work with co-manufacturers um, to, to make our products, and it has helped us um, adapt our, our code of practice to um, include all these environmental concerns. So even the, um, the external standards that aren't be corp related that we do ascribe to are all aligned anyway. So again, it is just this very handy, comprehensive tool to get you on the right path. And if you do end up, if anyone here is from a food business that hope, hopes to or already does supply to the UK, they are quite um, demanding in their requirements. So it's no harm to be already thinking about all this. And like in the UK, is is B Corp, if, the fact that you're a B Corp, is that sufficient for like companies that you're trying to supply into or do they look for more information on top of that? Well, they'll ask for annual emissions. Yeah. So you do have to know your headquarter emissions. I mean, as a good B Corp, that's something that probably you'll already be doing because it's fairly straightforward and it's something that earns you points towards certification. Um, but a lot of, I mean, it comes up in every um, meeting with our buyers in the UK. There's 1,500 B Corps in the UK as well, as you guys already know. But um, it is, it has a much higher kind of... Um, consumer recognition rate and everything you have retailers very engaged with it as well so Waitrose and Whole Foods and Holland and Barrett and I um I could probably go on but they have all run different activations or events to align with B Corp month or just kind of year round mm. um so yeah they're they're more kind of familiar with the certification um but it's been so handy and opening doors to collaborate with other UK brands and as I said, we were in the window of a major um, supermarket for the entire month of B Corp um, in a really kind of visually impactful way. Um, and that is something that we would never have done if it wasn't for the fact that we were all in this great movement together. Mm, amazing. Yeah, we have a lot of catching up to do with the UK and Ireland, but we'll get there over the next few years. Um Mary, so what about you? Are you using any other reporting tools or standards to manage your sustainability efforts in Urban Vault? Internally, no, that would be the main framework we use would be the, the B Corp, um, the BIA assessment. But what we have developed um, on off the back of that is a monitoring kind of software for our clients. So all of our solar clients get access to a mobile app or a desktop app, and they're actually able to get real life data from their installations. So we're in turn helping them report on their reduction in emissions, what they're pulling from the grid, what they're pulling from their systems. If there's a fault, they get alerted. Our maintenance team is straight out to the client. So um, off the back of our BIA assessment, we wanted to make it more transparent and more visible for our own clients. Um, but internally, as our, in our company, in our headquarters in Dublin, usually the, the B Corp framework is what we, we go off for our sustainability strategy. Okay, brilliant. Cool. And you're already touching on that a lot of clients like notice that you're uh, a B Corp. It's incredible. It's amazing. Amazing. And it'll be hopefully as well. Louise, you've really given me a confidence there and going into the UK because our plan would be to expand into the UK next year so I was really looking as you know B Corp would be a great hook to get in there because it's it's so renowned and well known in the UK market um, and yeah. so it's going to be an amazing inroad there and um, so that's really positive for us as well great news can you um like it probably a little bit before your time in urban vault mary but can either of you talk to about getting um board approval to make the legal change so having to update your constitution how how did that go for either of you uh i'll go first because i know less and i'll let louise <laughs> but um on our on our side the first one we went to the board our board we were lucky we had just started out our board was significantly smaller than what it is now uh so it was easy to get through but i think even if we were doing it now with verdane as our investors um it would be easy because they're they're aligned in the same mission it scares people to think of that decision when it's actually it's not it's not such a, a huge process it's just changing and amending your language 
um, obviously to, to reflect that decisions are made for all, all stakeholders. But yeah, we were we were lucky at the time that we did it from the very beginning. So I'm actually interested to hear now from, I suppose, a bigger board how, how that went. Yeah, with Strongworth, we um, we had a different board composition than we had have now. And I would say, speaking diplomatically, the fact that there were two board members from an American uh, base meant that they were much more conscious of litigation or creating a financial fiduciary duty um, that didn't exist before, which isn't actually what the wording is about. So the anyone can look this up, by the way, on the B-Lab website and see the wording um, for themselves. But what it does is really just create the um, responsibility to consider the environment and social concerns in the board's decision making. So um, like as of right now, there's no requirement to have it be priority above things like growth and profit, but it's just asked that it is considered in that kind of matrix of decision making that they're doing. And um, the great thing was then, so we, we changed the board structure when we um, got the investment from McCain Foods and that was all preserved. So there was no question that any of that would ever change because it is part of our constitution. So that was really that, they call it the mission lock in action, um, which meant that like McCain were uh, investing in a company that had this in their constitution. They knew the lay of the land and they had no interest in making any changes to that. The new board members then who sit with us from McCain Foods then are wholeheartedly kind of following the model. And actually yesterday I um, attended a Strong Roots board meeting for the first time and I was so happy to see that mission lock in action because I was presenting on the environmental implications of a supply chain change. So it really does go to show that it kind of it allows them to consider these things and they're aware that for the time being, and especially with Strongwoods being quite a young company, growth is very important. And so if we, you know, don't have the resources to um, to always prioritize social or environmental, it still means that they'll they'll consider it, they'll engage with it, and in the future decisions will be made with that as a priority. So it's been brilliant. I was so happy yesterday. Amazing. That's so cool. So one last question for the two of you before we go to the to the floor. Um, what advice would you have for entrepreneurs or business leaders on this call considering B Corp certification or, you know, um, the person who, who's considering to go this in, in an organization like yourself? Like, what would your top tips be? I think Mary already said, like, just start, um, set up an account, have a look at the assessment. Even if you don't want to submit it for another two or three years, you can still use it as a framework to improve how you're doing things. There's no requirement once you've started the application to um, to submit it with any time within any time frame, um, and it'll really help you to frame how you're going about things in the life of your business to understand what would be required of you as a B Corp. And even if you decide that B Corp isn't for you right now, you can still use all those tools provided to become a great business and come back to it maybe in a couple of years time so I still think the the best time is right now honestly to just start engaging um with the tools that are free and there for you to use oh yeah I concur I just think like start where I know everyone we're all businesses we're all concerned about the bottom line but it's about balancing purpose with profit um and the whole mission behind B Corp is to try and be better so to, to start that process and just try and make improvements where you can, it's not about being perfect. It's just improvement is, is key. So just begin, just take start the assessment. Super. Okay, so we'll open the floor to questions now. Um, let me I see. Can, I can have a look at the questions there, James. But look, thanks a million, James, for giving that overview um, of B Corp and, and for Louise and for Mary for, for your insights. And it was, you know, really interesting, I suppose, just to hear the different, how different stakeholders like, um, you know, view B Corp as well from employees to investors to, to, to customers and, and, and the benefits that that brings to the company. Um, and I think it's fantastic just that the B Corp assessment tool, the this B impact assessment tool is actually a free tool on, on, on the B Corp website. So it's like a really good first place for companies to start, I suppose, is to, to look at this tool and, and, and see how they can apply it to different areas in, in their company without making any commitment at all. It's a good 
framework, it's a good environmental and social governance framework. And, uh, you know, a lot of companies, I think, are at early stages, perhaps trying to get their heads around this um, and what's coming down the tracks in terms of, you know, the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive is, is, is focusing the mind you know, particularly for large companies, but also for SMEs supplying into large companies to help them report on, on their supply chain impacts. So it's a really good place to start and, 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 and a good framework. So we have, um, yeah, we have, a, we have a number of questions coming in, uh, which is great. And, and the first might be for, for you, James, or, or actually Louise or Mary, it's just in relation to biodiversity um, impacts. So will or are biodiversity impacts already co cooperated incorporated should I say into the assessments too yeah so um the certification doesn't uh directly address bio biodiversity conservation um but it does promote business practices that have a positive impact on the environment including biodiversity um and there is um new standards coming out um so the, the organization has been around since 2007 so the current standards were written in 2019. So we have new standards coming out in the next couple of years that are, are going to address that specifically. I will say in the, because we we will, James, Mary and myself will have all, all done slightly different assessments. So in the food version, you are asked about biodiversity in your supply chain. So you don't have to um, necessarily have made big steps or anything, but they, they reward the fact that you might understand um, the impact of biodiversity that are happening in your food supply chain, certainly. So it mightn't be the case for every business. Obviously, it's only relevant to certain certain businesses. Yeah, that's, that's that's interesting. So for different sectors, there's potentially there is not potentially, but there are actually different uh, yeah assessment tools. Because I always describe it as a, a choose your own adventure. It's like those books, you know, when you're a child turn to page 32 or whatever so depending on what you answer to certain questions and what industry you're in you might be kind of guided down um a separate set of questions but that's why it's great to to set up an account and have a look now and see see where you're kind of going to be um asked yeah. james sorry i i jumped in there was there anything else that you want to add there? No, no not really no that's fine yeah um, and there was just another question, I suppose, if someone were talking about se different sectors, about um, <clears throat> digital services companies, and um, you know, what are the benefits for digital services companies um, to 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 have B Corp certification? But I suppose, look, the, yeah, the benefits are, are you know, will, will equally apply to all sectors. But are you familiar with any um, digital services companies in in Ireland? Um, not off the top of my head, but I mean, the benefits will kind of be similar to the ones that can outlined on the deck, you know, it's, it yeah. does apply to most companies. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, and then what I know, what is the general timeline then for companies from, I suppose, the initial assessment to certification? Yeah. So when you submit, okay, you go into what we call an evaluation queue. Um, so you're waiting for one of our global, um, analysts to have a look at your application once they go through and make sure everything is okay you then are moved on to the verification queue and the verification person then when you get into that that's where they're really getting into the weeds of your assessment asking you to supply um, supporting documentation everything you need to do to prove your answers so when um, in 2020 when we had this massive spike in interest which has continued um, the wait times were quite long but towards um, Q4 and this year, they're coming down to like um, a maximum month and a half to two months um, for evaluation queue and verification queue. So if companies have everything ready to go, it can be four to five months. It takes them to certify from submission. Yeah. But again, it's kind of like when they get asked questions about the analysts, which are completely separate to, to myself, my, more of a business development role. The analysts are the global team. We've no contact with them really um or influence over them um it's when they ask the company a question if it, it's some it depends how quickly you get back to them too so yeah i'd say kind of four to five months is the short answer there great thanks james um is there now you did mention that i suppose b corp is for companies making a profit so is there or do you know of an equivalent b corp for the public sector and there was a similar question then in relation to charities or not for profits um, obviously, the framework can be used um, yeah. by anybody, but yeah. 
Yeah. So look, we're trying to iterate capitalism. So it is for, for private business, but they're more than welcome to use the B impact assessment to measure and improve their impact, like for sure. And it does align with the UN SDGs as well. That's yeah. great. Um, and just another question in there. So how soon for a new company? So um, this particular company looked at it in year one and just thought that it was too soon. Um, or what would you suggest in terms of, say, number of staff or turnover that would be a good time, I suppose, for, for a company to, to, to look into it? I think kind of um, echoing what um, Louise and Mary were saying, like, go for it as soon as possible. Like, it's yeah. your, your company as it grows is only going to become more complex. And um, so do it as soon as possible, really, would be what I would recommend. Yeah. And there's another comment there, just kind of echoing that, I suppose, in terms of, you know, like it does make good sense for startups to align their, stru their structure with B Corp and creating that draft assessment initially and moving on then to perhaps certification. Exactly, um, yeah. Another question there. So can a startup with roughly 10 employees of running an operation a year and a half undergo a B Corp certification process? So how long does a company have to be up and running yeah. They need to have a year of operations a to, year. To, yeah. to go forward yeah. to be assessed, but they can use the tool like from yeah. even before they set up. If someone wants to kind of look at it from a while they're writing their business plan, they can do it at that time as well. Yeah. It's, yeah. And you did mention, I suppose, that it's very popular in the in the UK, in the in the US, I suppose, markets, and it's it's growing, I suppose, look here in Ireland. But what is your kind of feeling in terms of the level of consumer awareness for B Corp in Ireland? Yeah, so there, there is actually a study across um, Europe, excluding the UK. We're going to be bringing out the results of that um, in next month. But the awareness among consumers is 14%, um, which when I heard was like, oh, my God, that's so low. But apparently people in the know it's actually quite high. So it will grow all the time. As I mentioned, we have 500 Irish companies in the pipeline. So it's kind of exploding here at the moment. So it's just going to go up and up as we have more resources to, to, to promote the movement and more B Corps really talking about the benefits of it. It will, it will grow a lot. Yeah. And just in terms of size of companies in Ireland, and um, you know, you've mentioned Danone and you know, we have yourselves here today in terms of Earth Age, Urban Vault and Strong Roots, but what is the typical size, I suppose, of companies um, certifying to, to B Corp? And do you need a team dedicated to the process or could a smaller organisation, 10 to 12 to 20 employees become a B Corp? Definitely. Like the, the vast majority of B Corps um, around the world are that small micro business from one to nine employees. Um, so there's no reason why smaller companies um, can't certify. In Ireland, actually, we have a, a larger number, a, a higher percentage of big companies, um, which is which is positive. Um, but yeah, like there's no reason why micro businesses can't go for it for sure. Yeah. And then there's just another question. Then in in terms of retailers, are you aware of any retailers or service providers that are applying for B Corp status? And I suppose the context of this is that this will then encourage other companies um to be to become B Corp. So it's that kind of supply chain effect, um, and this will encourage companies to go for it. Um, obviously, like the B, B impact assessment is a is a free, but it's also a very confidential tool. So it wouldn't be right for me to share specific retailers that are going forward for B Corp certification. But definitely there are, um, you know, any company in any sector in Ireland that's looking to benchmark themselves or remain competitive going forward is looking at this. Um, so there's this huge scope. Um, obviously, the retailers, particularly for businesses like Strong Roots, would be um, amazing to get them on board. And if any of them are on the call or they want to speak to us, um, we'd be delighted to speak to them. Um, yep. Yeah. I'll just add publicly, like public knowledge, um, <laughs> in the Netherlands, ball.com, which is kind of the Amazon equivalent, they have the certification already and their sister company, the biggest um, chain of supermarkets in the Netherlands, Albert Hein, I have announced that they're going for it. So they don't have it yet, but they, to my knowledge, they would be the first kind of bricks and mortar store, certainly that we sell in that, yeah. um, that will have it. And then we also work with one in the United States called Thrive Market. That's another kind of online subscription-based kind of um, send out a box um, of groceries retailer. But 
it's we already work with one that's certified and one that's on the path to certifying and i i think there probably are a lot more in the pipeline and just, just a question there i suppose in relation to larger companies so baileys and diageo ben and jerry's and unilever and you know in terms of you know larger companies certifying but this is applicable to all size companies um you know small companies and and large companies and by large companies aligning to b corp it will influence then their supply chain as well which is you know having a positive impact yeah, um, I think like it's important to, to go back to the whole mission of the movement, which is to create a more inclusive, equitable and regenerative um, economic system for all people on the planet. And realistically, it's very important that we can br build, bring in those massive employers like globally because they have the most impact. So, um, yeah, like really, there are some industries that we, we can't certify, like controversial industries. Um, but for the most part, we, we really need to engage with the, and are, we are engaging with these larger companies for sure. Yeah. And bring it, and everyone is, is on this journey and bring everyone is on this journey and, and that will have, you know, wider reaching effects in, in, in terms of just the awareness as well. And there's just one last question before we wrap up, up on the Q&A. And um, I suppose this is more maybe for, for Louise and Mary. So, um. What did you find, I suppose, as kind of the most difficult part or tricky part um, in terms of the, the B Corp certification? For us, um, I think actually it's probably our supply chain is the most um, difficult part. Um, we are a solar company. So, well, we're not a solar company. We're a clean energy company who provides solar as a service. So therefore, our the solar panels are, are generally coming from China. So that's going to be a longer process for us to try and fix. It's not something that's going to be done overnight. Um, but the positive thing is everyone in the company is engaged with improving our supply chain. So we've already internally done a supply chain audit on the companies that we use currently. Um, again, it's how much of this is, is the truth and how much is really you know uh, visible. We're not so sure, but we're consistently delving into that and it's our it's in our sustainability strategy that we want to have full transparency over our supply chain over the next coming three years so it's a long-term goal but that was definitely for us the most challenging uh part of the assessment yeah thanks mary and the same to you louise yeah i would say um similarly supply chain as well um the way we work and it isn't the way every food company works but it's the way many food companies work is we'll develop the products and then um uh, have them made with a supplier a co-manufacturer so um, part of my job is really engaging with our suppliers to capture the positive changes they're already making so the thing about it is any business no matter where they're based but especially if they're based in the EU or the UK they will already have had requirements made of them in terms of environmental impact and um, understanding those things understanding their water use their waste their energy use so it's a matter of kind of engaging with them and making sure that we capture the good improvements they're making and having conversations to see um, how we can continue to make improvements like one example from Strong Roots is our supply chain team with their new goals set to that relate to the planet. They've mapped every single bit of inbound and outbound um, like product freight. And they're looking at alternative um, vehicles like electric or biofuel. They're looking at, uh, in America, they're looking at rail versus road and just trying to understand, even though we don't own the fleet, what changes can we make? Can we work with um logistics suppliers that have electric vehicles can we actually move some frozen stock onto a train how easy would that be because trains are demonstrably less hard on the environment so it's been um definitely a, a challenge to understand the full implications of our supply chain when we don't own it ourselves but the ways we've found to engage with it have been really positive so it's a big job but it's obviously very well worth doing and there actually just is one or two more questions so, um, that are very relevant, I suppose, as well. Look, and, and following on from that from that question, I suppose it's like, um, how what do you do after you you know achieve certification in terms of do you carry out much internal training? Um, how responsive are employees in 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 strong roots and in in urban roles? So it's okay when you've treat, achieved certification, kind of like what's next. <laughs> 
Well, for, I'll say for Strong Roots, um, as I've said now a few times, with the goals themselves being set around the B Corp values um, for every member of staff and every department has been brilliant. And I kind of realised day to day or more like month to month that um, a little bit more engagement and staying in tune with developments would be great. So I propose that we put a buzzer, I called it a buzzer. I don't know. I'm slightly slightly mortified by this name but it's kind of a pun on B and like Irish buzzers but um there'll be one person in each department on each team whose job is to kind of stay on top of relevant news in in their aspect of the industry and bring ideas to the table to the rest of their team stay in touch with me about B, B Corp events that are happening or um conversations that are happening in the community or advocacy we could be doing and really just keep in tune with everything so I think winning people over to how important the certification is early on is really important and finding some mechanism to keep them engaged day to day or like as I say more like month to month let's say is um will really stand to you I think and I know Mary has a team a CSR team you said yeah yeah we do but we actually we included in our onboarding process as well so we educate new employees on what the B Corp kind of status means for us and for them um, and we give them a bit of insight to the community then. But I'm actually going to take inspiration from Louise now because I love the idea of setting the pillars like for, you know, people and planet and having each department responsible for for that area in their own department. So, yeah, I think like the certification is obviously amazing. All the employees engage and they know what it means for them. But like I said before, just involving departments in the certification process is is so important from the outset um but yeah i'm definitely definitely going to take inspiration from you louise on that one that's the b corp way exactly <laughs> well look um i think it's probably time to, to wrap up now we're, we're just gone past two o'clock but i'd lo- just like to thank james and, and thank louise and, and thanks mary for for today and for showing us your passion in this area and i think it's given us all um inspiration and it's it's you know, good to feel that, you know, we can do something and, and to leave on a, on a positive note. Um, so we will share the recording afterwards. We will share the slides and we'll also share a link to register for our upcoming webinars. Um, James went through the uh, supports there earlier on. So keep in mind, you know, there are a range of consultancy and training supports. We have a directory of green service providers and um, you can filter under sustainable strategy for B Corp and you'll see then who the expert, experts are in this area that, that can help you align to B Corp um, certification. Um, so yeah, look, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out whether you're an Enterprise Ireland client to Enterprise Ireland, to the local Enterprise Office uh, Advisor, to to Udo Ross or, or TIDA. There's, there's supports there for you. So look, I'd just like to thank everyone and um, hopefully we, we'll see you soon at our next webinar. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.